Badanath and Gora Narayan. They have heartfelt love and respect. Sri Guru and the Holy Dham, and they are seriously following all the limbs of Bhakti. As a result, they are steadily advancing on the path of Bhakti. One day, Paranguru Dev hears that two of his so-called disciples were fighting in front of a Jatku tree. In the garden behind the new temple, they were trying to kill each other and are bleeding, full of scratches. Paranguru Dev became silent. Guru Dev comes to Paranguru Dev saying, they are like Jagai and Marai. Paranguru Dev replies, that in Navadri, Jagadamaya, Madhai were liberated by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But these two are worse than the demon brothers, Aranyakashipu and Ramarasha. They have no regard for Guru and Vaishnavas. Both are big demons who have entered, entered this Devananda Gaudiya Gurudev then asked Pram Gurudev, why don't you help them? Pram Gurudev replies, they don't want any help. They themselves have taken the situation into their own hands and thus behaving in such a manner, they don't care for anybody or care to come to a solution. Gurudev sees that Pram Gurudev remains neutral. Gurudev became disturbed over the situation and did not go to see Pram Gurudev for three days and nights. Gurudev chanted and fasted on behalf of his two God brothers. After three days and nights, a change took place in the heart of these two God brothers. They approached Pram Gurudev in a mood of regret to accept his punishment. Pram Gurudev said, Why have you come to me? Go to the police station, go to the court, and receive a judgment there. One should not, one should come to me only for the purpose of bhakti and bhaja. At that time, Srila Gurudev came forward and asked, what can I do to help them? So their hearts were changed. And Pram Gurudev said, why are you so compassionate to them? They have no respect for me or for the Vaishnavas. They only have faith in their own strength, and thus they take matters into their own hands. Don't help them. Some devotees present told Pram Gurudev that Gurudev had been fasting and chanting for three days and nights for them. Hearing this, Pram Gurudev noted in his heart, on another occasion, some devotees had disobeyed and displeased some of the the disciples of Prabhupada, Bhakti Siddhartha, Saraswati Thakur. Guru Dev then went to them and changed their mood, making them humble, regretful, desiring to beg for forgiveness. Guru Dev was outwardly very strong. If someone would not follow the rules and regulations, then he would outwardly chastise that person. But if anybody feeling guilty understood their own fault, then Guru Dev being very kind, would behave with them in a sweet and polite manner. And he would, he's ready to give them everything to that person. One day, Pram Gurudev called for a meeting with his god brothers and disciples. He said, this Gordon Narayan is a friend of all the devotees. He is helping everybody and has sympathy for all devotees. Therefore, at that time of giving him Diksha, I give him the title Bhakti Bhavan, a dear friend of the devotees. Moreover, he is Narayan, he is Naranam Haranam Bhavan, a friend to all people and living beings. Bhakti Devi has given her blessings to him, and he distributes her qualities to everyone, allowing them interest into the realm of pure devotion. 
He will create a bond between all the devotees that will last forever into the future, creating a unified group and society. Therefore, I confer to him the title Gordana, Gordon, Godahari Priya Bhagavan, a friend of all. Who can show you the lotus feet of Krishna? Who can lead you to the lotus feet of Krishna? The feet of Krishna. That is Guru, a Prima Guru, a Prima Bhakta. A dear devotee who has established a loving relationship with Krishna. He is day and night, 24 hours, engaged in the loving service of Krishna. He who has bound up Krishna in his heart with the rope of love, only such a guru can show you and lead you to the lotus feet of Krishna. Because he is very dear, an intimate associate of Krishna, such a personality is a Radha Priya Saki, a very dear girl companion of Srimati Radha Radha. To me, in my heart, to you. Thank you. Thank you. Just went back and forth. Okay. Okay. Oh. <laughs> 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 the fasting today. Oh. <laughs> He is Srila Gurude. Please accept my most heartfelt obeisances. Before finding the Krishna conscious movement, or the movement finding me, I had a desire, strong at times, sometimes weak, but nevertheless, a desire to know God and develop a relationship with him ever since he touched me. I sometimes feel amazed that I'm sitting here in the association of devotees, and I shudder to think what my life would be like had I never met them. It is no accident, though, that Sri Lakuride came to save me. I don't know why I deserve that, but he took me on as one of his daughters, and he became my father, my mother, my everything. For that, this very fallen soul is eternally thank grateful. We should all be thankful for Sri Lakuride Sangha, his instructions, and his guidance toward Radha Dasyam, especially when we consider what the alternative could be. Jai Sri Lakuride. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I also don't have to worry about this. to speak about. But um, Sri Guru Dev explains that, and just again, I was not the book, we just read something that's just testimony to everything, who we are, and what we should be about. Sri Guru Dev explains that 
Um, of course, we do know that when it comes time for the different entity to wake up from his, uh, or, or, or that his most auspicious, his, his best good fortune will come, then he comes in contact with those that are eternal service of, of Radhika. So Gurudev explains that Srimati Radhika sends her sakis into the world, and she sends them with some seeds, and these seeds are planted within the hearts of all those that are of her line. Um, in other words, and, and these seeds are Krishna Seva Vasana, the um, impetus or the desire that is a, 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 a awakened within the heart of the devotee to serve in that particular line that their Sri Guru comes in. Um, I also um, wanted to not to be about sharing so many pastimes, but um, I guess that I, I, I do need to share some pastimes, but not because of me and my being involved in them, but because they're good, good as glories. And something that Shamarani did, he said also, I had that personal experience that, because um, um, I heard Guru that mentioned to his guru, he mentioned to his guru that he was having so many difficulties. And of course, how they should agree that have any difficulties. But he went to Param Guru Day and was telling Param Guru Day that he was having some difficulties. And he said that Param Guru Day was touching his chest and patting. And then all these things went away. So I, I had the same situation. I wanted to speak to Shri Guru Day very badly. Um, because it was um, a, 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 something that was plaguing me in, in a very intense way. And then it was like the last day of Karti, um, the, or the day after the last day of Karti, and um, we were about to go back, or come back to the West. And so we saw Shri Gurude walking, and I was thinking to myself, I mean, I can't go back to the West without asking Shri Gurude to help me. And um, I was like a little embarrassed because one lady walked up at the time, and I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, she just ruined everything because I don't want to talk about this in front of Shri Gurude. But anyway, I spoke to Shri Guru Dave, and I told him what my difficulty was. And he had, of course, a very great, very sweet, beautiful face. And he started patting my chest. And he says, oh, I will help you. I will do one operation. I have one big hospital. So I can attest to the fact that Krishna Vallabha, uh, Vasanti <laughs> Devi, yeah, yeah, I just said that. So, Lalita, Krishna Vallabha, Vasanti, Madan, yes, then back over to Dina Bandhu, and Fonsi, then we'll come back again. Hmm? So, I'll make sure that you get in. Also, Arup Narayan Prabhu, because they're traveling from a distance, Keisha Prabhu is also traveling from a distance. So, we'll try to get people in and don't actually stay in. Okay. Oh my kena chana dasya kena chana shalakaya chakshu tam chana tasvai shi gurare namaha namaha vishnu bhravadika yata nishishta bhakti vrata nirvanta So um, I also don't have a very good memory so I decided this time I'm going to write down so <laughs> I'm going to have to share it so, so. so I was <clears throat> writing this down and I but um, what has my Guru Dave taught me? There's three words that come to mind frequently when I think about my Guru Dave. Compassion or mercy, sweetness and love. When we try to comprehend or digest the nature of Guru and who he or she really is, then it can only boggle the mind. Sometimes I like to imagine following in his footsteps even though I am so very, very far away. But still, it is awe-inspiring to imagine what would it be like to be perfectly, to perfectly follow in our beloved Guru Dave's footsteps. There's going to have to be some day where this will have to become a reality. I remember Srila Guru Dave was speaking about Raghunath Das Goswami. 
speak in Badger. He was telling everyone how his austerities were unprecedented, taking only a few grains of rice, a tiny spoonful of buttermilk in only an hour and a half, sleeping each night. Then he told us all that, he told us all of us that we were going to have to follow the same protocol as Shiragunath Daskoswami. Even though I didn't have any boots on, Oh, even though I didn't have any boots on, I started shaking in them anyways. <laughs> I thought to myself, what's it like to be a Mahabhagavat Rasik Vaishnava? What's it like to be 100% free from the false ego? What's it like to only think about the happiness of Sri Sri Radha Govinda and Sachinandana Mahaprabhu? What's it like not to consider my happiness as the all in all? What's it like to not want to consider when I'm going to eat, sleep, or be married? What's it like to be fully absorbed in the Lord's pastimes 24 hours a day, nonstop? What's it like to be complete, to completely love Guru and Guranga unconditionally? These things I try to contemplate. It seems an impossible task. The achievement of being a perfect follower of Sri Guru seems like a very far off, distant dream, or the equivalent of walking and actually reaching the top of the Himalayas. How is it possible? But when we read and hear about the mercy of Sri Guru, and we become, then we become somewhat hopeful. The depth and the extent of Sri Guru Dave's mercy, like the man who is helplessly stuck in the bottom of a dry well, for weeks and all of a sudden someone throws us a rope. We can either grasp the rope or refuse. What sane man would refuse a lifeline? These are the kinds of things I meditate on when I think about my Guru Dave. If only I can become a real follower and not a hypocrite. And I just wrote a short little, I don't know what you call it, but for <laughs> you are the Gokula on earth that I sing for, the high unattainable moon I cry for, and as long as I live, I will live and I will die for the sound of your name. Shila Guru Dave. Jai. 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 thousand years, the world lived in a male-dominated religious system that all of humanity was subjected to and could never question. The goddess was gone. Femininity was gone. The male domination created havoc during Kali Yuga. And now here we are, 500 years after Mahaprabhu came to deliver us from that lopsided way of thinking about the divine and bring back to us Shimati Radharani and all of the divine feminine energy with her. And then we have our Guru Parampara further in fanning the flames of these beautiful truths. And really, until Gurudev, for me personally, until I met Shri Gurudev, I had no concept of there even being a goddess, of there being such a thing as a feminine divine. To me, when I stood in front of the altar in this one for so many years, praying for a guru to come to me, I would see Krishna, and that was all I saw. Couldn't, didn't even really acknowledge that she existed, to be honest. And then Gurudev came. came <laughs> and what makes Gurudev so incredibly special, I think it's so beautiful to walk into a room full of such sweet, open-hearted souls, to come in here and see so many people, even all these years later after Gurudev has left us, to feel everyone's deep moods of love and appreciation for Gurudev is so overwhelming for me. And I wonder, well, why? Why are we all still here? Why are we all still sitting here crying our tears and remembering Gurudev? And the one thing is, he made us feel, he made us feel loved. He poured love into our empty hearts and filled it with treasures 
and we haven't fully realized what those treasures are, but they are there. And in the quiet moments of the dark night when everyone's asleep, if we can take the time to dive deep with Harinam or with our mantras, 108% the treasures Gurudev left there for us will reveal themselves to us. 108%. We must have faith. And what Gurudev most wanted for all of us, we all want to please Gurudev. We say we want to serve Gurudev, we want to please him. And perhaps we don't really know how. How can we please such a personality? It's almost an impossibility. But really, if I tune into my Gurudev and what he really wanted of me personally, and I would say probably for all of us, is that we take what he came to give us and run with it. Take that mantra and pray and go deep. Close your eyes from this world and enter into the divine worlds. And like Lalita Saki just said so perfectly, walk in Gurudev's footsteps. Where is Gurudev? What is Gurudev doing right now? Where is Shumati Lalita right now? To really enter into this understanding that this reality is going to be leaving us. We don't know when, but it's coming any day now. This is gone from us. All our family members, everything we've attached ourselves to is going to disappear in a flash. And what are we left with? We're left with what we actually achieve in our hearts. How far into the kingdom we actually endeavor to go. And so for me personally, if I could share one thing, it would be the inspiration to, to follow what Gurudev wants for us. All these treasures he's given us Let's really make a strong effort, all of us together, who are sitting here saying we love them. They're just words if we're not trying to get the treasures. He went to great effort. In fact, our whole Guru Parampara had spent all their time and energy so that we would have these treasures in our hearts today, in this life, in this moment. We are so blessed beyond the beyond. We're so fortunate because the rest of the world doesn't have what we have. But Gurudev said, we can't give what we've been given if we haven't tasted it first. So first give it to yourself. Save yourself by Gurudev's mercy, and then go and give it to everyone that you meet, because they don't have it, and they need it. They're starving. The world is just going. You can see it. Kali Yuga. We're so fortunate. So I pray on this day that Gurudev, we inspire our hearts to do our bhajan very seriously, very concentratedly, very earnestly, and with tears pouring down our eyes. I pray all of us can have this experience in this life because then we want to please Gurudev. Yeah. 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 What time does the program start this evening? Six o'clock, I think. I want to see if you can do the content without taking five minutes. Well, you can get ready, you should speak. Here, I'll hold on to it. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want to hold on to it. She's got a whole. See what I mean? That's what I was trying to do. Yeah, go ahead and repeat. Go ahead and repeat. I can't come. Well, she's sent us up. First of all, I want to thank whoever decorated the temple room in the Kazakhstan for today. Thank you, 
very much. <laughs> it looks beautiful. Um, it didn't really uh, pair very well. I just um, want to offer my obeisances to all the Vaishnavs here. I'm very grateful for your association. Um, Guru Dev has planted many seeds of bhakti in so many hearts. And I see them blooming so nicely. And I'm praying that by your association, that my desire to serve and to hear and to chant my species will also bloom, even though I may be seeing you and I'm certainly not seeing you <laughs> in Bhakti. And, but I'm praying that she will be very, she is very powerful, more powerful than I can ever imagine. She has descended into this world just to bring us to the lotus feet of Sri Radha. And his power has shown by all of the incredible Vaishnavas who have stirred me and inspired me in his words and his, just like um, someone was saying, coming, on, coming out of his eyes <laughs> and falling on all of us. And we could feel it in, in Badger, especially one of my memories <laughs> is two years ago we really loved uh, we called the Australian tune so the mm -hmm. Hare Krishna I since heard that that actually originated from Bangladesh the devotees it kind of always brought it over and anyway it's a, it's a thousand many different transformations but we they really love that and whenever um, we would have the devotees singing the Adjur we would have the women singing and the men singing. It was so beautiful. And uh, you could just feel the, the sound vibration going out into the universe. <laughs> 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 For your good day. Huh? I 
a imagem e as elas só nessa. Mainly, I really want to speak so that um, you guys can hear all the past times that I have with Rudy and think about how cool I am. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, you get a drop of pleasure from hearing. Despite me having Pratishta, then it's successful. <laughs> um, so I first met Gurudev um, in a house in Jersey, and um, I was 15, and I didn't want to meet him. My dad had brought us to the house. My mom was really excited to meet him, and I was like, I don't want to meet him. They, you know, there was like some little idea of getting initiated. I was like, I don't want to get initiated. <laughs> So I went upstairs and went in his room it just as a darshan. And you know, and then when I saw him, it was like <clears throat> it was just like a almost like a picking up where we left off, you know. It was like a very familiar face, very familiar eyes, and I was like, Oh hi, it's you again. <laughs> um and so then I did get initiated when I first met him. <laughs> But I gave him this little, I was thinking, I was like, before I met him, though, I was like, well, I want to give him something that he likes. So what does he like? Like, when you first, you know, you bring gifts to the Vaishnav. So I said, like, oh, I know he likes Swami Maharaj. I know he likes Prabhupada. So I had this tiny picture of Prabhupada, and I gave it to him. And he looked, and his face lit up, and then he rubbed the picture all over his body, like this. <laughs> And then he put it, he has a little kurta pocket, and he put it in there, and he said, he'll always be in my pocket. <laughs> so that was really cool. <laughs> and so then, <laughs> one time, um, I was speaking about sharing your truth, and he says, how are you? I was in Matura once, and he asked me, you know, I went to a bedroom this morning walk, how are you doing? And I had read the Madhurya Kadambini, so I said, he said, how is your bhajan? And I said, oh, it's kind of Tarla. And then he chuckled. And then I said, actually, no, it's Tarla Tarla. Because <laughs> kind means thick and Tarla means thin. Like sometimes you're very absorbed and strong in bhajan, and sometimes you're weak and Tarla. So I said, Tarla Tarla, he does this big laugh, you know, and he shakes his shoulders like that. <laughs> and, you know, again, yeah, you, you share some truths some honesty to him, and it seems so intense within you. One time I said to him, oh, I have so much pride, Gurudev, and then he just said, oh, you will do so much. And it wasn't even like related necessarily, but it's like your problems are so small, you know, compared to what he, his shakti and what he could do with them. So it's just a matter of offering them, and then he just does what he wants with them. And so then another time we were sitting in Varshana, and it was just me and him somehow. And he says, uh, you are a flower. Aww. And I said, no, I'm not good. I'm garbage. <laughs> right? So stupid. I felt so stupid. <laughs> he was just kind of like, he was just kind of like, okay, whatever. <laughs> so, no, but I realized, you know, how important it is, you know, for our identity, you know, to be completely aligned. Complete identity. You know, because... That is what will take us to Radha and Krishna. Like it doesn't matter what he, how he sees us. We have to just make our identity completely aligned. You know, I should have been like, what kind of flower am I? Jasmine? <laughs> you know, rose? You know, just not to have any separate identity from him. Um, that's so important. Not to have the false humility. Or oh, I'm bad. Or I'm this. Or I'm just whatever you want me to be. You know. Um, so that's what I learned from that. And then one time in Hawaii, um, he's I with one other girl, Govinda, Mahibar's daughter, and he said, um, oh, now you're so young, then one day you'll be married, one day you'll have kids, and then you'll get old, and then you'll die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just laid it out. And he said, I want you, I want you to be like Gangamata Goswamini, and I want you to be like... And then he said, when you shave your hair, completely off. <laughs> so he knew that was going to take a while. But <laughs> we'll turn on notifications for your Instagram. Okay? He, Shamarani, is so special to him, so important to him, you know. 
And one day we were in the airport and he was telling me, you know, no one can understand my heart. No one can understand my mood. He said, not even Shyamalan and Dean. <laughs> <laughs> but for him to think of saying not even Shyamalan, why are you even considering that? Like how beautiful and glorified must she be to him to even say that to her? You know? <laughs> I thought that was cool. But yeah, um, sometimes I think of like, um, oh, oh, the one thing about Jaiva Dharma, just serving the mission of Gurudev. You know, Gurudev, one of his big achievements was Jaiva Dharma. And so um, I did a play once um, of Jaiva Dharma with him, and he was so happy. You know, he was just, he was crying, and he would get so much taste out of watching his plays, you know. And, um, and then at the end, um, he called me in Tulsi because I played uh, Kramanas Babaji and she played um, Sanyasi Thakur. So he called us over to him and in front of everybody and it was filmed all over the world. He gave us this huge hug, you know. And it was so cool because there was no controversy because we were dressed up as boys. So in the hug, it looked like we were guys. It was like this long, intimate, really beautiful hug, uh, you know. And I was like, there you go. You know, it's like if you can do something, anything to really, you know, please the, the, the heart of your guru day by following his mission and aligning yourself with his mission, then you'll be successful. So that was really sweet. Um, and just in keeping with what everybody's been saying, you know, sometimes I think, you know, anybody thinks they're a guru. Everyone has so many gurus in the world, you know, and everyone loves their guru day so much, you know, and. And I was thinking, so that's good, you know, but I, I know my guru is the best. <laughs> so what makes him the best, you know? And I realized that it's, that she belongs to this current um, that comes from Shiva Rupa Manjara, you know? That it's like every second, every moment, her entire consciousness is like saturated with um, the next service, the next thing to please Radharani. It's like it's like a, a flow, like a, a, a <clears throat> like a huge current, just completely, constantly, her consciousness is just absorbed every moment. No beginning and no end. No beginning and no end. It's just oh and somehow she's able to like align these things in the form of different services and every next service is just coming and coming. She's completely And her heart feels like it feels like honey is being poured all over it all the time, like warm, thick honey. And just completely in that flow, completely aligned with this one So that's all I want to say. We're gonna start to do the worship of you to pray. So pray. Oh, you have the video ready? The video is ready? Can we do one thing for something? Oh, it's okay. To be here in your home energy and quickly and in your everything, we are like a umbrella of you. Krishna is help. Krishna helps my all our energy. So don't be worried for your life. All have to something like anything or hold energy, like money, energy, your loving.
So there's a very auspicious day. There's a very auspicious day to to do that. To give you a donation. So pray. You should go ahead. Um, I was just thinking of the time when um, <clears throat> my great aunt and my great uncle, my mom's aunt and uncle, um, they first met Grude, and my great uncle, he's an atheist, and he, he believes in Big Bang Theory and everything works. And so we met Grude, was it in Miami? Uh, Orlando. And so she finally met Grude, and she's always been interested in him. They were around the same age. And she ran up to him and like gave him a kiss on the hands and like hugged him and everything. And Grude was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and she broke down. And so I went to, you know, check and see how. But it's real. It is real. And if he said that, I was like, okay, I know it's real now. I gotta take it in. <laughs> but I was just crying because you have all of these things in your head of I wish, I wish, I wish I would have taken more advantage of when he was here and how intimate he was towards me and all of his daughters and he told me when I was about 16 he told me he said Prem I want you to be strong I want you to go into this world and break it up like a thunderbolt what is that and so I was like okay I'm gonna break it up <laughs> then you know I grew up and Boys came and oh my God, help. But now I know what he means. To not just break up this world, break up the misconceptions in this world, but break up the misconceptions in your own heart. Break up my own heart like a thunderbolt. And I had to lay it out for him so that he could put it back together. I was just thinking about that just now, it just hit me. Like a thunderbolt. <laughs> so I'm trying not to have this I wish thing in my head. I don't know how to get rid of that. It's very it hurts so much. But you know, when you have something that precious, you have to hold on to it. Because you don't know when or where it's going to come from again. So we're all so very lucky that we were able to have a very strong father like him. And he said he will always be in our hearts. But break up your heart like a thunderbolt. Break up the misconceptions in your heart. He'll put you, put you in his pocket. So that's all I have to say. It's just realization. Hi, Krishna. Hi, everyone. or um, reasons why it's kind of strange to me to think of Thursday's appearance day versus disappearance day. Um, maybe they're just times to mark uh, some sort of special highlights to our to our ongoing relationship with Bill Gurdjieff, at least his mind. So Madhu Didi isn't here today. She's in Minneapolis. So um, I want to speak two stories, um, uh, personal stories of hers, 
or, or is her relationship and, and two uh, of mine. Um, so yesterday we were driving uh, from a hotel, we're always traveling, and um, everything was running late. And uh, we're at the hotel and we were waiting for our car and the time is going on and the airport's delayed. And, and I'm just getting anxious and um, nervous that she's going to miss her flight and the weather and all these things. And we finally get the car and make a left through the road cones. And there's this long road. And I, in front of us, we're in Tampa. It's about, I, I think it was 3.6 miles according to Siri. And um, we all live with Siri, right? It, all of a sudden, I knew God is Siri for some reason. Anyway, Siri told us that it was 3.6 miles, and it was a straight line, as so as Florida's you know so want to do, just have straight roads. So three point mile, 3.6 miles ahead of us, and all the lights were green. Have you ever done? Have you ever seen that? Anybody ever seen three points? And every block, every couple blocks was a light. It was green. And um, then we got on the highway, and we went through all the lights. They were all green when we went through them. Um, and then we got on the highway, and there was nobody in front of us, and then we pulled off the highway, and there was another green light, and we pulled into the airport, and, and Manja looked at her watch, because we were late, and she said, we got here exactly when I wanted to. And I turned to her, and I said, isn't it amazing, Drew Dave, like, micromanages everything. Um, <laughs> and she just looked at me, and was like, hey, you know, I'm sort of nodding, and I, 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 he, he's, his, our experience with him is that He's always there and always doing these sort of things. And, and if I look and try and figure it out, I can't say what comes to Um Another thing happened to Majibi in New York. We were up in Washington Lakes. For those of you who had the, the good fortune to be there without any water. And um, <laughs> talk about that offline. And um, my wife, I, I, as dear as I love her, is a very strong and independent woman. And she uh, was new, and they were going on, Mugurshul Gurdjieff was going on morning work, walk. And my wife said, well, what's the deal with morning walk? And um, she wasn't very versed in, in etiquette. Um, so she said, well, every morning, they, Gurdjieff goes on morning walk. And uh, I said, OK. And the next morning, she got up, and she um, she gets in the car. And I said, where are we going? She said, morning walk. And I sort of looked at her, but I I would learned already that Manju is a force of nature, so <laughs> she she went on morning walk. And um she was she was you know, she had a scarf on and she covered her head and she was polite and she's walking along and and um of course the men in the group who, who felt that it was their time with Gurudev, right? I think Sean was on that were you on that walk? I, I anyway. Oh Washington Lake? Yeah, Washington Lake. And uh, all the men were looking back and seeing this female. And now some of them knew her some and Gurdjieff turned around, and everybody was quite. And you, and you could see the look in all the men's eyes as to the proper etiquette. And Gurdjieff turned around and said, "Oh, Manju," turned around and kept walking, <laughs> as if it was the most normal thing in the world. And um, I, I, I remember this very strongly because it's how personal Gurdjieff is that his relationship with Manju and with myself are so strong that I know everybody, a lot of other men were looking and what's going on. Rajnath pulls her aside later and explains the etiquette and that it shouldn't reflect poorly on Srila Gurudev. Because it wasn't Gurudev who was concerned about her, it was that other people might. So just, just as a, a, a Radhan had just explained. So those are two things with Manjaji, how personal he is. And um, on my side, um, I came down to Alachua, I don't know, how it's 10 years, 15 years, I don't know, 12 years ago now because I was coming to die. And I was very sick. And um, I'm alive. Uh, and and uh, at one point, I didn't know what to do because it, it was, um, I think Sean Ronnie can probably relate to some of those kind of experiences. And, and Gurdjieff was in town, um, not here, he was in Pennsylvania, I think it was. And I said to Manjai, I'd really like to talk to him suddenly. And so we traveled to wherever it was, and I wanted to speak to Gurudev alone. And of course, I couldn't, <laughs> because everybody else was there. And I was trying to be very personal uh, with you know, revealing things that I didn't want to say to anybody else, including my dear sweet wife. Um, 
And uh, I was, honestly, I was asking her day to let me go, but, but let me leave and whatever came next. That was what I was there to ask him for. My wife heard it come out of my mouth. I saw her out of the corner of my eye. A whole other story. But Gurdjieff just looked at me like, well, it, I said, I can't, I can't even stand anymore. He said, uh, and he said, well, you do the best you can, and I'll do the rest. And uh, I, he said some more things to other people, but that's how my remembrance of uh, my con continuing, hopefully, relationship with Sir Gurdjieff about the person is. And the last thing is a story that didn't happen to me, and I hope somebody else knows the story personally and can relate it. Um, but it's, it's symbolism, I think, is something I always keep in mind. Apparently, Gurdjieff was um, traveling with a party. I think it was with Brenda Beebe and others, is, that's what I've been told. And he came to some free hospice home um, in the late evening, I think it was. Uh, I don't know all the details. I said it wasn't my experience. And um, they came in, and the the householders weren't prepared, I think, for, for Gurdjieff to arrive, and, and I was told that Gurdjieff's response was, um, no harm, no problem. Um, we will sleep in the car. Uh, something like that. I'll let somebody else tell the story properly. But my take from that little bit of story is that Gurdjieff is not only personal to me and my wife and so many others, um, but he's an example to look at is uh, that I look to all the time. And so I just share how his ongoing importance and, and relevance to just the, from the smallest of traffic lights to the high big spiritual questions. Um, I hope I never lose that attachment because that, that's, that's a wonderful a figure it is in, in at least our lives. They do, they do. Oh, Shamran is ordering me to, to speak a story. Um, I, I'll, very quickly, I was driving, again, in Washington Lakes this time, and I was driving uh, for Gurdjieff. And um, at the time, uh, I was working in public policy for the you know, U.S. government, and I was working with uh, uh, then President Clinton um, on the question of uh, people cloning, being cloned. And um, so, Brajanath, since I got the picture, Gurdjieff is sitting in the passenger seat, and I'm driving, and I'm trying to ask this question. I said, Gurdjieff, I have an opportunity to maybe influence uh, the policy of, of this cloning and what people do and owning life. And Brajanath was backseat trying to explain this to Gurdjieff because he wasn't quite sure that uh, Gurdjieff understood. And Gurdjieff, well, one, Gurdjieff turns, so Gurdjieff is sitting there with his japa, tadi, shadi, kushka, Rajanath then turns and explains, and Gurdjieff looks back to him and he says, I know. <laughs> I know perfectly. That's Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And so I, then I'm quiet. I, I, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And he looked at me quizzically, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Looks back and says, they do, they do. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. <laughs> um, so the separation of the material ongoings of Kali then is, is another so uh, thank you very much for you. Hello, Rajma. Also, quickly in the story, actually, I was with Gurudev and, and uh, Briar Prabhu. We traveled from Gurudev's. Uh, Gurudev was in uh, Virginia, but he had promised to the uncle and aunt of Kundarik Brahmachari, who used to travel with Gurudev, that he would visit their home if he came to America. So it was two or three hours away to Virginia Beach. We offered to pay tickets for the family to come up to see Srila Gurudev, but Gurudev said no because he had promised to come to their home. So and in India, that's a special thing to visit someone's home. So we drove down, we took the drive down, and we came in. The family had a relatively small house, and they offered Srila Gurudev their own bedroom as the place to stay. They had prepared and everything. And because Srila Gurudev had observed that the children at Abraya's house previously were sleeping outside in a tent, and not understanding the kids like that to play, they wanted to be outside. Gurudev thought that all the brahmacharis and the elders had dominated the inner house, and the kids were forced to sleep outside, kind of thing. So when Gurudev asked the family about the arrangement, they said that, no, we have everything. So Gurudev said, show me. He wanted to see where they were going to sleep. And uh, they said, no, no, we've taken care of it. They didn't want to show Gurudev. So Gurudev said, no, I've been sannyasi more than so many years, and..." This uh, Naveen at that time is Manamaras. Now he says he's Brahmachari, he can sleep here, and Pundarik can also sleep. 
uh, outside with me. I'll sleep on the seat of the bed because I'm a little old. <laughs> and then they can sleep on the floor and on the roof. And then he told for me and Agraya, <laughs> he said for me and Agraya, oh, because you're Grasta, you can sleep on the floor inside the house. <laughs> like that. And so Guru Dave actually went to the van and was preparing. That family was crying. They came back and told the Guru Dave, Guru Dave, we cannot see like this. So then Guru Dave relented. But he said, first, you have to show me. So they had one room, which was like an extended closet, more or less. And they had prepared them place. But because they were so tearful, Guru Dave obliged for them to stay there. Uh, 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 So like my husband said, he was talking about crime. What's a crime is that I'm speaking and that I haven't made any advancements since the last time I spoke. But still, I am in association with all of you to some degree, to whatever degree I'm able to accept it and absorb it. So I'm very grateful to be able to hear from the devotees who spoke today, um, listen to their pastimes and hear their realizations. Um, I tend to approach uh, my, my practice um, sort of like the way I have strike a pose. So, unfortunately, terribly external. more capable to do has given us the order to not to be hopeless, not to be weak. And personally, he told me to read my books. He said, read my books. When I asked him, I got one chance in my whole life to ask him to say something to him, to ask him for extra mercy. Because I was feeling so I don't even know what they were. taking the opportunity to live up to that. I also feel a lot of separation from living a devotional life um, in the temple. Like when I first started, with this kind, um, I got. I think that was really good for me to be able to be in close association with devotees. So Srila Prabhupada gave us that. He he knew we needed that. He probably realized that there was no other way that we would be able to absorb enough in order to try to get it in our hearts so that we can make this practice for the rest of our lives and beyond this life. So in separation, I guess I do feel some separation in that. I feel separation that I'm not able to 
take better advantage of people like vice novels like Shamarani Didi because I'm feeling ashamed and embarrassed. But um, somehow or other, if I can get over that, I know that I will benefit. There's so many devotees here that I wish I could take more advantage of your association. Um, some are male, so it's just not going to happen in this lifetime. And, um, some are female, and like I said, I'm, I'm just very much an infant when it comes to um, what Guru Dev has come to give and what all the Guru Varga has have come to give us. So um, I pray that that is something tangible, something that I can actually can, um, to um, make advancement in the association of Rude Sangha. Guys, we do this. that I made on this Shri Gurudev's Disappearance Festival. Um, this past year or so, under the guidance and mercy of Shri Shri Gurudev, who's been very merciful to me. And heartfelt memories and, and words that Shri Gurudev has instructed. And I'm just feeling so enlivened and so grateful to be here. Um, my memories of Shri Gurudev are when I was very young, and I didn't, I didn't take it very seriously at the time. Um, like somehow or other, like <laughs> I, I got I got some mercy. I don't know how I deserved it. Somehow or other, he, he was very merciful to me, and and he he planted that. I, I don't know if this is the right example, but he planted some hook in my heart. So no matter how far away I tried to go, I, I was just drawn back to him. And somehow or other, coming here after so many years and finally feeling like I'm home, like I don't need to be anywhere else. I was just, I mean, except for the holy dumb. But um, I'm feeling so happy to be in your association. I'm feeling so grateful to come here and to have, to have the darshan of Shri Gurudev, to have the wonderful talks about Shri Bhakti Sharma, to be and Shri Bhakti and so many other Vaishnavas. I just, I finally feel like maybe I'm on, I'm on the right path towards where I need to be. And I'm so grateful for Shri Gurudev for saving me. Jai Hari. Yeah.
last time I spoke with you, just also recently, I, I mentioned that I'm so famous, Kabir Raj Goswami wrote the verses especially for me. Jagai Madhai Haiti Mui Se Pabish Puri Shaki to Haiti Mui Se Lakish Muranam Shunaja Tarapun Nikai Muranam Laite Tarapapa Hai Amon and again the Mori Kibaki Pakori Ekin at Tanandino Jagat the Majari Ekishilu Gurudevino Jagat the Majari So you know, Gurudev, he, um, it's funny, they, they, they say that, uh, that the Guru has this uh, amazing ability to be so heavy that no one can go under. You know, heaviness is a, is a quality of, of God. There's um, so many things in this world that, uh, that are called Bibhuti because they, they show a quality of divinity, like mountains, they are in, considered an immovable force. You know, uh, heaviness is something that people we uh, we heard about already today. We heard about how uh, someone can be an authority to you, like uh, when you when you are already on your own right that day. You have nothing to answer to. You're an adult. And um, you may meet a person that, that somehow they have authority over you. You don't know why, because legally you're okay, and uh, you know religiously you know you're fine. But someone can somehow have an uh, authority over you, and that can be energetic. Maybe some some lower part of you. Maybe maybe um, someone can have authority over you because of ancestry. You feel like oh, actually deep down because of my ancestral connection, I'm very indebted to this person. But sometimes you meet people that have this uh, ability to uh, lord it over you in ways that you can't understand. Not just um, my feeling of shame and, and duty, but also my feeling of politics or social or even my, uh, my own personal desires, things that I just would like, whether they're good or not. And, uh, you know, the, the, the thing about that is, is that... Um, we don't have much time to talk about it, as Sanatana Prabhu said, in seven minutes, I can barely even uh, uh, introduce myself. Uh, what is, and I'm a very simple, small person. Uh, Shri Guru is, is something that, that Krishna, he would like to hear about this topic. He himself, with all his time, he can't figure out the Guru. Because the thing is, is that even Krishna, you know, he's the alpha male, uh, not just in this world, but uh, even up there where Lord Shiva is sitting in his higher planet, where the mountain still doesn't seem to have a bottom or a top. And um, the the thing about Guru is that, um, you know, well, he put it himself, because I actually had never quite figured out how to explain God in such simple terms. But he said, well, you see, the G stands for generator. Everything has come from him. You may, it may, it, you may, it may have been a long time ago, so what's the point? Of, who cares? You know, maybe God is just a thing of the past. You know, it's millions and trillions of who knows who built the temple and what was going on there. But here's the... Here's the evidence, you know. Or maybe uh, God is also the thing of the future. That, okay, it may not affect us now, but eventually, whether that's a, a few years or a few million more years or more than that, eventually we'll all meet God, you know, in some lifetime or another. Or, hey, whatever happened or is going to happen, one thing is for certain, God right now is in control. Because no one can stop even a mosquito no one can stop feminists. No one can stop Trump. Everything is going on. And who is to say anything about it? So Gurudev is actually, no, and this is discussed in the Vedas. It is, Prabhupada pointed out, in all the Vedas, there's three ways that we talk about God. He is something that, like it or not, this is the source. Like it or not, this is this is what, how it's all going to end up. And really, the fact is, is right now, it is what it is. So, and then, so, Gurudev, of course, he says that's what G O D means, generator, operator, and destroyer. Now, when you have Guru, somehow, by some very deep down kind of heaviness, even Krishna is he's taking notes. I guess you have what time? But, um, so um, when when I meet, I will start speaking for myself. When I meet Gurudev, uh, I have this kind of thing because I was actually a grown up. I was an independent man in my mid twenties, as we all know, when white American privilege and 
you're, you're, you're 25, you rule the world, right? You have no, no fear of anybody. And so to meet Gurudev, you think, wow, here in one, I met the cop, the lawyer, and the judge in one person. <laughs> this, and, and it's not even like, like really, you know, no showing a badge, no, you know, I, this is not my religion. I wasn't born a Hindu, you know, I'm in my own country. I'm not a fraught stranger in a strange land, and this person just owns me. And at the same time, you feel like, he's my lawyer. He's on my side. If, if anything is going to happen, this man is going to make sure it happens in my favor. And there's, at the same time, he's the judge. He's the one that really, like, the law's in his pocket. He knows he knows what you deserve. And he's also the one that busted you. Like, you didn't even know you are in trouble. And then he just grabs and says, hey, why are you worshiping Shemati Radhi? Like, who's that? Right? So, anyway, that's enough about Gurudev. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about Shiva Prabhupada. There's no, no discussion about Gurudev. We can talk, talk a little bit about that. I met a lot of Dovus throughout the 90s, and some of them taught me about the Maha Mantra, some about Maha Prasad, some of them taught me about Tulsi Devi, and each of those things, you know. With Maha Prasad, you realize that actually the thing that you want, the, you don't even want, the thing that's best for you that you don't want, that you should want because it's the best for you, can actually taste good. And then with the Harinam, you realize that actually the solution to the entire world's problems is so easy that anyone can do it. Wow, fine. And then, and then with Prabhupada, you know, the thing about the thing about heaven is that Prabhupada showed us that there's actually something beyond heaven. And that's the thing with Gurudev. He actually, he didn't. He just took Prabhupada's line, going beyond the point. Because Prabhupada, he showed us that the bridge bosses, if you want to be like Krishna, you're crazy. You wind up in heaven because you thought. So it, it, that's for for Vaikuntha, everyone gets you know that Vaikuntha bottle. But if you want to be if you want to be really lucky and happy, you got to be like the bridge bosses. Because even Krishna, well, that's another thing. Arato Bhagavan Vrajesha Tanyas the Dhamma Vindara and more kind of good news. It's so hard. But but even even you could wind up in Vrindavan and where is Krishna? We don't know. Rumor has it he never left, but he certainly seems to have left. At least I'm here with the bridge bosses. Nanda, Jashoda, and all those very dear souls that we can't even mention. I mix the two we we have to mention them a lot at a time. The bridge devis and the bridge vasis are such people that if you worship them and thought of them all the time and you actually wound up becoming like them or becoming one of them in some lifetime, you'd be fortunate. So then Gurudev, at least for me, I will I will say my last thing about Gurudev is that if there's anything that I'm interested in this world, it's not, you know, getting married, it's not getting a job, it's not uh, showing myself that I'm a man or that I'm a saint or that I'm a, I'm a rock star and a debashi. Any, any goal that I could have in this world is really coming down to the kindness and the confidence. Because when I met Gurudev, there was no one else around. And I think that, you know, Srila Gurudev is like, he's like, he's like the Pope. His time is extremely important. Uh, the other day in, on uh, Vasanti Devi's orders, we saw the cathedral in, in, in uh, Savannah. And there's, there's yeah, she, she ordered me with service. I had to do it. Yeah, you know? And uh, it's, uh, the cameras are, are there so that, because he's the, he's, the, he's the Pope of like 90 different counties. And, and so, anyway, it's not the Vatican, but still there's, um, there's uh, cameras that show that when, when he, his foot touches the front step, then inside they'll light the candles so that everything's ready. So Gurudev's time is extremely important. And there's that moment where you think, how is it possible that throughout countless Brahmandas, this person's got a visit to explain what Krishna just did and what Mahaprabhu just relished. And, and then this person, this, 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 this guru, this guru, even, even Krishna is, is taking notes from, is spending personal time with me. So I think I've talked enough in seven minutes. I have a little more time for some of There's always next year. So the last time I spoke, I spoke about my personal conversation with your day. And this time I'm not prepared. For um, hearing the Lord speak, I was inspired to say something, and that is 
Um, Okay, so um, this, I guess, question is going to be answered for you today. Um, you said that you have regrets about Cheer Your Day and not having an association and meetings with him. And it's funny that you said that because I felt the same way. And for years and years and years, I told my husband, you know, because I'm sinful, material, lifted person, I mean, feeling jealousy towards other devotees, having so much memories, which I shouldn't, but anyhow, um, Gurdiv's mercy came to me when I first saw the video of Dalio Seva team. And um, I didn't think I could do it because I hope to my daughter. And um, life is just so busy. I mean, regardless if you work or you don't work, you're at home, there's always stuff to do, right? So um, anyhow, Gurudev gave me this opportunity to serve him. And I just want to relate with you and share with you that since I've started audio saver team. Since I've been listening to these lectures, I feel personally that when I listen and I have my earphones on and you know the whole world is going on out there and I'm just listening to Srila Gurudev, it just takes me right to that place wherever he is in part of the world, whatever part of the world, whether it's France, Germany, Holland, the U.S. Badger, all the festivals that used to go on and, and, and I never got to be a part of. I just feel so much connected and I feel like I'm there listening, hearing from him. And this really, really helped me because, I don't know, Gurdjie just, he knows everyone's heart and he knows our desires. And I just want to say that this, this Seva is one of the greatest things that Gurudev has given me. And I want everyone to know that just by listening something from Gurudev, um, sometimes we think we're not capable of moving forward and advancing. But by hearing Shila Gurudev and by just taking one thing, one, one instruction, Something small, it can be any little thing, it can be um, chanting an extra round, and that's just an example, but something, because Gurudev always used to say, he always used to say, always think, like, we take New Year's resolutions, every year we try to do something new in the new year, but every day, at the end of the day, we should always think, you know, have I advanced in bhakti? And, this is one thing I keep dear to my heart, and I try to tell myself, Chamarani Didi always says, you know, whatever you're doing, listen to a lecture, just play, you're cooking in the kitchen, you know, you're in your car or something. It, it helps in our path of bhakti, because as you all know, we're all full souls, and me especially. And, you know, we need whatever mercy we can get. And this, this audio seva has really brought so much joy and happiness and fulfillment in my life. It makes me feel like I have a purpose to serve my very day. Thank you. Thank you for the who else cannot come and see me? Who has not spoken? He can't come and see me.
Și... Bage, so, uh, what I can contribute to this is that uh, I'm not a direct disciple of Shri Buddha's, but um, you know, I started off like anybody else in this movement, uh, taking um, Vani tutelage from Shri Prabhupada. And um, if uh, he hadn't already given me enough uh, reason to be enthusiastic about the, the process, I think Shri Prabhupada made it sweet. He made it so much sweeter. I mean, obviously not so sweeter than Shri Prabhupada, but you get what I'm saying. He, uh, I, I was exposed to different things uh, by this Mr. Shri Prabhupada's Haritata than I had from anyone else. So, um, so one thing, uh, one story I'd like to share about uh, Shri Prabhupada is. Um, I mean, it's kind of a private story, but I feel I should share it to exemplify what everybody already knows about how powerful Shri really is. And uh, teachers who have come this year, they've said, said many times, repeatedly, again and again, that whatever you saw at Shri Guru there is only the tip of the iceberg. And um, so uh, myself and Lani Ji, and somebody else was sitting in a room at my home and uh, just talking and stuff. And then all of a sudden I felt, this was the day after I wrote that song, Guru Dev, Shri Guru Dev, and um, I believe you heard it because uh, we felt this energy, oh, at least I did. I felt something come into the room and then I just couldn't control myself. I started crying uncontrollably, like, a, like completely. And I was like, I was like, why? Because we were talking about Shri Guru actually already. And I was like, why does, in, oh no, I was saying in English, why why does Shri uh, Guru keep on making me cry? Why? Why? So he's so good at it. Makes us all cry so well. So, um, my, my friend, I won't name who he was, but I think he is, but he was, sit, he was like sitting somewhere in front of me, and he's like, um, she would be, I see Shri Guru there walking toward you. And he's in his mandri form. And I was like, oh, what was he over here? And he's like, yes. And anyway, you can call me Sajjo, whatever, I don't care. This is a real story to me. And so I truly believe that he was there because I've never, I've, when he arrives, and I've felt it before because he visited me in a dream once where I uh, was very ill and um, he was standing behind a, uh, a, I told this story before, he was standing behind a, a sheet, a bed sheet. I was hanging up on a laundry line, and then I was walking, and then all of a sudden the, the wind blew, and the sheet came up, and Shri Laguna was standing behind it. And I was like, I was astonished, you know. Uh, I blew so I was like, it's like, oh my God, Shri Laguna, and I, I could, could barely get it out. I was choking, my voice, voice was like choking up, and I just started, I uh, started crying, and I, I reached, reached in to, to for him to embrace me. He, was, he actually accepted me, so I was like. I woke up. Oh no! And then I and then I looked at him. He didn't. Shri Guru didn't say a single thing. And then um, I, I, all of a sudden he smiled, and I and I woke up. So my point is that all these titles, Yogacharya, etc., these are not just words given to uh, somebody just to make a show. Yogacharya means, to me at least, means that he is. Even though, of course, it's a process. You must take Hari and Diksha, and then consider that person our only guru, like my guru. I consider him my only guru there yet. But um, Yudacharya to me means that uh, Srila Gurudev is the, uh, the um, Acharya of the hearts of every single living entity in this universe and beyond. This is Yudacharya to me. So with that title and with all of these things like the tip of the iceberg, Srila Gurudev. Um, so powerful that he'll even come to see people who are not directly initiated by him. This is what my point. And the uh, last point I'd like to make is um, I really uh, like learning shlokas, and 
I received this enthusiasm through two, two personalities um, even before I came to the shop. So when I was living in Grand Rapids, Michigan, I was watching videos by myself. Nobody here knew who I was except for one person. And um, so I, I would hear, you know, I would hear, I didn't know, I didn't know who my guru there was at that time. And it was funny that I became his disciple. I was like, why? I, I didn't know any. I didn't know proper Vishnu Raya Guru. I was in this and whatnot, and, you know, learned as much as I could. And uh, so, anyway, um, this this beauty that I, I realized how how beautiful as 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 a like English uh, major in college, I studied so much literature like uh, um, I mean from Shakespeare to Milton everybody you know, and just just recently I'm realizing deeper deep more deeply how beautiful Sanskrit really is. You know, even though I love rock and roll and all this stuff, <laughs> I do. I, I I can't you know I just love it. So, but. <laughs> When I sit down and I and I and I sit down with the Shishoka, I forget about rock and roll. I forget about everything else. Really, I sit there for a couple of days, and I and I and I do my thing there, like reading and etc. And one verse, uh, I mean, because Shishoka, he made me realize. Uh, you know, I used to love reading the Gita, like since I was, I was reading it every day. I think it was like twenty or twenty-one onwards when I was going through you know, some things that twenty-year-olds go through in college. Um, by myself, at least. And uh, he taught me that there's more value. I mean, there's, there's other things than just verses from the Gita, Yadai, 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 Much more Sarva Dharma, Pajaj, There's always so many things. More sweeter, Geet Gogan, you know. Yadi Hari Smarane, Sar Sammanaha, Yadi Vilasu Kalasu Kutahulam. These things, this diction, this really, uh, this, this meter really appeals to me when I hear Shiva Gurudev. Which is my guru did in tandem during during this uh, play, perform this leela together. And uh, anyway, I would like to thank today on Shilaguru's appearance day for um, attracting me. I mean, it's bewildering me. Thank you. Okay, so we have a, about a 15 minute video which we're going to do at the end before we go into everything. So it's stated that when Krishna's mercy becomes thick, he appears as Sri Guru. So I was remembering in Brihat Bhagavatamrita, the instructions are uh, Gopakumar followed, and after he entered Vaikuntha, Narayan explained to him that he watched him. For many many births, and every time he said, Lord Narayan expected him to turn towards him, but he didn't. So he he told Gopakumar, I myself came as your guru Jayanta, and I gave you this mantra, and you uttered it, and due to this you have entered Vaikuntha. So such is the mercy of Krishna, such is the mercy of Guru. My personal experience, every time I try to run, I get caught somehow. When my parents turned to Krishna consciousness in the late 90s, I was young and it was very, uh, it was very uh, sinful, of course. And I said, no, I do not want to be part of this. And I left. And I went to New York, 18 years old, and I was just living with my cousin, and we were just having supposedly the time of my life. A few years later, just summing it up briefly, a few years later I had a dream, and in that dream I died. And I met the Yamadutas, I never heard of them. First time I'm sharing this in public. <laughs> and I can, I can just Feel it up to I can see it like real, like right now that it just happened, and I saw the Yamadutas. They snatched me out of my my body, and I was crying and I was screaming. I was it was March 2005. I remember it, mid March, two weeks before my 22nd birthday, and I was screaming in my sleep, and it was just. Seeing the Yamadutas, 
never heard of them before, not knowing anything about Fifth Canto of Bhagavatam. Anyway, be before I left um, Kayana, my my mother, she gave me a uh, Bhagavad Gita and she told me to read it. I never read it, but I kept it with me. So just the mercy of the scriptures that I kept it with me. And I had it, every apartment I moved from, I kept it. It's locked up somewhere. Anyway, after I woke up from my, my, uh, sorry, was in that dream, I was dragged to hell. I saw what hell is like, believe me. I saw it. And as I was entering into hell, there was two big golden gates. And I was screaming and I didn't want to enter. Of course, you do not want to enter. The Yamadutras were pulling me. And then all of a sudden, I saw the gates of hell closed. And a voice above. From my understanding, it was Yamraj. He said, you're not going to enter hell today. Because you're going to turn to Krishna. And I woke up. And I looked for the Bhagavad Gita. And I went down on my knees and I was crying in the night. And I said, Krishna, I'll give you this life. <laughs> and two months later, I met Gurdi. What are the odds of that? So sinful still, because our tendency as human beings, when we are in a predicament, you know, we call for help. But then we forget all. So my parents... Um, how I met Shri Gurdiv, my parents were coming to the um, U.S. to a festival in um, Columbia Lakes Resort in uh, Houston, Texas, 2005. So I, it was like a road trip family thing for me. So I, um, my parents got a video camera and I was going to go do the video recording. So when I first saw Shri Gurdiv, my parents... My father told me to bow, but I'm so sinful, I, in my heart, I was like, I'm not going to bow to no man. Was recording, but then as soon as I moved the video camera and I actually saw him with my eyes, I fell and I offered pronouns, what I thought was funny. Later on, um, I met like Damodar Maharaj, Madhubrat, Prem Prayajan, Kishore Mohan, and so many other devotees. And they were explaining to me how fortunate I, it is to meet a Vaishnav such as Gurudev, Mahapagya. And they were, you know, discussing to me about receiving initiation like this. And I said no. Ablakti said no. So my parents, I was holding my niece, um, she was just about four years old, I was holding her, her on my lap, and um, my parents and so many other devotees were there because Gurudev was staying, staying in, a, in a cabin. And um, they went inside, maybe about 20 something devotees, they went inside and received initiation and then they came out. And as they came out, they all were so excited and everything. And Madhav Maharaj stood by the door and he said, anyone else? And I placed my niece on the side, and I, I don't know what happened. I walked into the door. <laughs> I'm inside, and Madhav Maharaj left, and I'm in front of Gurdiv by myself. And it was just amazing. And that was it. I, I realized he, he, he spoke to me. We had a little discussion for a few minutes, and he uttered a mantra. And I received Harinam initiation. And just remembering how, no matter how much sometimes we turn our face away from the Lord, our face away from Guru, somehow or the other, He comes. Like today, I um, I always think that I have to arrange things. You know, it's foolish me still. I always think that I have to arrange. And my wife was asking me a little while back, are we going to come for this appearance day? And I was like, no, I can't. You know, it's practically impossible. <laughs> so halfway through my shift at 7 a.m. this morning, because I work really early, I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, I'm walking, and 
I called my boss and I said, I have an emergency. <laughs> <laughs> and then I called my wife and said, I'm coming home. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so just to show you, you know, every time I try to run, you know, Gurdiv brings me. Just just a uh, few weeks ago on Gurdiv's disappearance, um, people in Diddy was asking me, are you going to come for Gurdiv's disappearance? I was like, I can't because my job is um, we don't get any benefits or anything. And if you call in sick, you get points and a few points and you're fired. So I always think that, you know, I have to, I have to, Take control, you know, no faith, you know. And Oma Didi looked at me and she said, Are you going to come? If you come, I'll be pleased. And oh. <laughs> I, I call in sick. <laughs> and, you know, such is the mercy of she girl. He has that kind of job, though, too. See, you know how it is. So, one um, quick fast I'd like to share. Time for my story. So in um, 2009, because Shamrani was explaining that Gurudev knows your mind. And personal experience, in 2009 in, in, in Govardhan, Gurudev was staying in his room. And usually when, he, when he's walking from his room toward the temple, he comes across and then he makes a left to go into that temple. I was, I'm just giving that um, his path for now. So my daughter, she was a, just maybe two years old, and we, I dipped her into the Yamuna, and apparently she swallowed some water. I'm thinking it's transcendental, <laughs> not knowing, you know, risk of material. And she had a deadly, she um, contracted a deadly disease that I wasn't aware of. And we were trying so many so many doctors and so many ways of um, healing her. Even Kishori Mohan, Pankajira wife at that time, prayed, prayed me. So many doctors and devotees were trying with so many natural and other remedies. And we were trying, we were trying. And then we went to go over that she had lost so much weight she, she wasn't sleeping at night. She wasn't retaining anything. She was practically dying. And we didn't know what to do. My father said, book a flight and go back to New York. Take her to the best doctor. And I was so angry. I said, Gurde, in my heart, I said, Gurde, you're telling us to come to Vrindavan and now this is what happened? And I got angry with Gurde. So I picked up her that morning and I walked. And I was walking towards um, the temple, and Gurudev was now coming out of his room, and he was going to that temple. It was maybe um, 6, 7 a.m. And Gurudev, as he was walking, he was maybe uh, practically facing that way. He turned around, and he walked towards me, and he took his garland off and garlanded her. And then, as soon as he garlanded her, I didn't say anything. I'd never uttered a word to Sri Gurudev. As soon as he garlanded her and he walked off, I was still in shock and still thinking, how is this, this going to help? You know, <laughs> She needs medicine, she needs attention. Damodar Maharaj ran up the stairs and he brought me to uh, Premananda Prabhu. And we, Premananda Prabhu, within a few minutes, arranged um, one of his cook to take us to uh, Mathura. And when we went to the hospital, the doctor said, she needs minimum seven days. That's how bad it was. And um, we were like, what are we going to do? You know, it's, he, they were really explaining to us how, how and such is the mercy she grew. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. 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 So there's, there's a, a video of Shula Guru Dave, and then we are, we are extremely late, but it's so nice to hear the offerings, especially very deep hearted offerings of, of devotees' experiences. So, Masanti Ji, do you have the... Can we do half today? Do you want to do it in the evening or in the evening? Yeah, we'll do it in the evening.
we just we have really very short time. All right. Already, you know, all right. All right. So we'll, we'll do for sponge the now, but also I think all the devotees would be remiss if we didn't offer a deep uh, uh, offering of thanks to all the Madhvasis and all the other devotees who helped to make all the festivals go on so, so nicely. Sindhupati, Adreta, Arjuna, Malini, all of the Lalita, all the devotees. So many devotees work all the time to make all these festivals and everything happen very sweetly. So we just want to offer such a deep uh, thanks to all of them for always making it happen. And to all the devotees. I shall look good day, Rabbi Baba, I'm hot of Kija. Shall look good day, Vakija. Shall look good day, Vakija. I think after Pushpanjali and the RT, I think we reconvene at 6 o'clock also. Yes. Oh, <laughs> 